If I'm being 100% transparent and honest, I want to win every event. Yeah. It's what it is. Yeah. My confidence is so much more, it's, it's definitely up there just because, I mean, I've proved to myself and everyone else that I'm constantly in the top five and it's not just a fluke, it's not luck, it's not the events, like, it's every comp that I've been at and just showing that to myself and everyone else, it's like, I'm definitely coming for that podium this year and I was scared to say that last year because I wasn't sure, but this year it's like, no, you're, you're going for it. People should be afraid of Haley Evans, that's for sure. Like, she, she's coming for it and the difference from last year's games to what this year's games is gonna be, that girl's on fire. She, she so is, so I don't know what else to say. I'm like, she's, she's coming. Knoxville, Tennessee, and the Mid-Atlantic CrossFit Championship. A city overflowing with history just 90 minutes down the road from Cookville would make contemporary history in 2021 by hosting the first U.S.-based in-person semifinal CrossFit competition since COVID-19 wreaked havoc on the globe. For a sport uniquely forged in camaraderie and collective suffering, celebration was in order. But for the athletes who would be taking the field of play, emotions varied and nerves would have to be subdued as 18 months of rust were shaken off. The first event, you know, walking in, being under, under the lights really, because you're inside and uh, having the crowd and just being in a really professional, cool venue, being in Thompson Bowling, pretty incredible experience, you know, especially to go from nothing for what, 15, 16 months, probably the longest in my career, but to just in a, like a real setting, quick was fun, it was, uh, a little bit, not shocking, but a little, you know, you gotta get the jitters out a little bit, gotta, gotta calm the nerves a bit. It honestly felt like nothing had changed. It, it kind of made you forget about the whole last year. I mean, just having the crowd there, it was so awesome. And, you know, just getting the adrenaline rush and hearing it, all the people cheering for you and screaming. And it was really, it was just such an awesome experience. And I'm excited for the games. It was awesome. It's definitely a different adrenaline rush than being just in the barn. It felt really good. It was kind of a wild experience just having so many people there and having a live event because we've been, everything's been online. And obviously the quarterfinals and the open and all that stuff. So being in person felt really good. The last time I was on the competition floor was Wadapalooza uh, last year. So right before, right before COVID hit, which is, it's a long time. It's probably the longest I haven't been on the floor since I started competing in CrossFit in 2015. So it's just a long, a long time to just not be um, under pressure, under the lights in a big stadium with fans. You know, it's just a different environment. It's a different sort of stimulus. Nice to just, you know, feel that adrenaline rush and kind of get that going. So I, it felt fine. I don't feel like I really missed any beats. Having, having that crowd there, I'm, you know, I've said it multiple times, I'm not much of a practice player. You know, I can, I can push in the barn. Um, and I can get in that competitive headspace, but it's so much easier, and uh, I I get so much from the crowd that it's I missed it honestly I missed it a ton, so it was it was fun and everybody there was was awesome all the you know the crowd was into it and it was it was cool it was really cool, but I forgot how much I missed it I guess you know like like I said last year with not having a competition I was like oh okay you know I think I think I could be done this would be the last one and then getting back out there I'm like. I did miss that, and it was fun getting back in that um, environment. You know, you, you almost dread it for the first event because of the nerves and just the the hype of it. And then once you get that, you know, first first at bat, I think of you know as, as baseball, then you kind of settle into a rhythm, and you're like, okay, this is this is where I'm supposed to be. So, yeah, it was uh, kind of let that fire back a little bit, made it more fun. For individuals and teams alike, the competition would start with a fan favorite, the heavy barbell. As Mayhem Freedom unveiled their 2021 roster for the first time in person, game day decisions were less obvious than in years prior. Me, I would have liked to have snatched. Team-wise, numbers-wise, it made sense for Chase to try to snatch. And so, you know, talking to Chase, I'm like, hey, calm those nerves. 
all I just need you to hit this first lift and you're good. Like you're gonna be fine. <laughs> what does he do? Just misses the first lift, just throws it. Basically he overthrew it. It was actually like my first event with Freedom, first event at an in-person competition. And I I got I think I don't know, I just as soon as they said go lift, that's a weight I can hit easily. And I just walked up. I didn't even set up right, all I did was just pull the bar and missed it. So I think after that, then I got the jitters out, and then I'm, I just had to calm down. But I was just like, oh, okay. And so in my head, I'm like, he's like, what do I do? Do I go up? And I'm like, how did you miss? Like, what did you miss it? Where did you miss it? And he's like, well, I just kind of, I threw it too hard. I threw it too high. And I'm like, I'm like, don't go, just hit 215. Like, we need a score on the board, you know? I just, in my head, I'm like, did he just miss that? And so, and then he did great. He hit 225 and then or hit 215 the next and hit 225. You know, I've been really nice for him to hit 235, 245, because um, you're seeing all these heavy lifts go up. So in my head, I'm like, all right, I've, I've got to hit a home run here. I complete, like I said, rookie mistake, went 345, thinking it was 355, hit that, no problem. And so I'm thinking 355, a 365 jump would have been 10 pounds. I'm like, that's kind of, it's, it's safe. you know. So I was like, 370 is a 15 pound jump from 355, but when 345 is a 25 pound jump. So uh, I actually hit that clean, which I've not hit in five, six years, something like that. The jerk, if I hit a clean, I'm gonna hit the jerk. I'm like, all right, just kind of settle here for a second. Maybe you can, you know, get past this and it wasn't happening. So I was like, all right, we're gonna put it down or else we're going down. So lights were going out. I don't wanna talk about the lifting, but if we're going to, uh, that was really a huge disappointment for me personally. First of all, missed my first attempt on my first snatch. We only had three attempts. So obviously if you only have three attempts, you want to make them all count. I think I started out a little too heavy, and I think I was honestly just a little, just shaken up. It's the first event I've done in so long, and the lights and the floor, and the bar was really whippy. And uh, So I wish I would have started a little more conservatively there and maybe ended a little bit heavier so I didn't leave as many points on the board. So just kind of thinking that out ahead of time a little better would have been a good idea for me weekend I did not perform. Lifting is supposed to be one of my strengths and I didn't really look strong. I think I really got in my head about not going in being super warm, only having three attempts. I wasn't sure my body's not getting any younger. I wasn't sure how that was gonna kind of hold up, you know, putting a bunch of weight on it when it was cold. So yeah, not not a strong point. When I do team stuff I love doing it just because I don't want to let down a team. So anything individually it's just yourself so that's why I was I just didn't want to be the letdown ever again the whole weekend. Yeah, I think we all had misses. Like I missed my first one, Rich missed his last jerk, I think Taylor missed her first one, and then Andrea might have missed her last jerk. There was no finger pointing it outward, it was finger pointing inward. You know, everybody's like, well I screwed up, well I screwed up, well I did this, well I did that, you know, so that was good that nobody was like, hey, hey Chase, you let us down, hey Rich, you missed that, you know, it's your fault. Even the girls were like, hey, we screwed up. Despite a less than perfect run, Mayhem accumulated 990 pounds, resulting in a sixth place finish. Although far from devastation, the result created an early hole to crawl out of. The team was disappointed and eager to put the event behind them. They now set their sights on Cerberus, a test that would unveil their prowess with the worm. After that event, we were all a little crabby for, uh, you know, good reason. Uh, but we knew we had a lot of fitness coming up and we knew we could make up a lot of ground with our fitness. I think we were just ready for some fitness. I think event two was more confusing for the crowd than it was for us. We actually had it kind of written down on our arms. We knew when the transitions would be. Event two was really fun um, and it was honestly pretty straightforward. Despite the, the layout, it was, it was pretty straightforward and we had practiced that beforehand so I felt pretty confident about that event. It wasn't even that complicated, it was just there was some strategy to it, honestly. I mean really it's not complicated in the fact that you have to get 30 cows on each machine and pretty straightforward but there was a little bit of strategy to the fact that you wanted to keep the males on the machines as long as you can and keep the transition time down as far as you could. But all we had to do is just get to the worm. We knew we could make up time on the worm and we were smashing the machines. And I knew our worm cleaner jerks were going to go well. I thought it would be a good kind of test to see where the other teams were at with the worm movements too. So I was excited for event too. I think we all were and feeling pretty comfortable and confident going into it. I think we PR'd and the, the transitions were further apart. The real run and practice were actually pretty similar. Our time at the event was faster. I think adrenaline plays a huge part in that. 
uh, and our worm moved, like I said, very well. I mean, obviously we wanted to be in first after day one, um, so we, I think we were all itching just to get out there and work out again just so we could prove that we can win. At the end of day one, I was still just super <laughs> I, was, I don't want to know, or I don't want to use the word sad, but I was just sad with myself. Just because there's no other lift to kind of make up for it, but it's hard not to dwell on that. So I guess I was just feeling kind of meh. We, we knew that once we get to the actual fitness stuff that we would do just fine. But you still you don't know, you know who's going to be, you know, what other teams do and where they place. And so, I mean, there was really five or six teams that were taking the same five or six spots and so we couldn't you couldn't at that point you couldn't figure out you know is it going to be West Chase that keeps getting second or you know how's it going to work and what are the what's the point situation. The only team to go sub nine minutes Mayhem Freedom elbowed their way into the top five with a dominant performance. While the day ended on a high note for the team it was apparent their dynamics still needed refinement. What'd you do? What, what was wrong? It was on the wrong side of the worm. I, we always start on that we side. I just walked there. All yeah, I looked at was the worm, and that was it. If, and if I was, that's our only problem on that workout, we did okay. So, smash that one. Just starting her day was the fourth fittest woman on Earth, 20-year-old Haley Adams. Despite the fact that lifting has been less friendly to Adams in past competitions, she approached OG with excitement, hoping to flex hard-earned gains from the past year of work. Oh, the snatch. That's one of the highlights of like my entire like CrossFit experience. Like no joke, that was so cool. Yeah, when I saw the one rep max snatch, I was excited to show off like the strength work we had been putting in. I've been hitting consistently 175 every single weekend. So I knew that hopefully a PR a heavier snatch was coming. It's still hard not to be a little bit nervous just because you only had three attempts. And you know, you never know, like you could go out there and bomb, you hope you don't, but that is always a chance of that. So I was a little bit nervous about it, but as I'm sure everyone else was. We had a plan going in, so 165, 175, and then depending how 175 felt, she was gonna go either 180 or 185. I actually wanted to go 180, but Tasia was like, no, go 185, which I'm super glad I did. Who will save us? Who will save us? Sometimes you gotta let go. Leave it up to the hero. Who will save us? Who will save us? When the truth's in the shadow. I knew I wanted her to go 185 just from watching her snatch every day. I'm like, you snatch up to 180 easy all the time. Like, this is it to try 185. 165 easy, as expected. 175 easy, as expected. And she looked at me and she was like, 180? And I was like, 185? I'd only planned to try lift again if it was on the first one. Like, if you just, I was a little shaky and missed it because I was nervous or whatever. Because obviously, if it was the next two lifts, it was just too heavy to try it again but I don't know what happened. I was just like, I'm gonna step back and try it again. And somehow got under it. She missed the first snatch and my favorite part of the entire thing, Haley's so smart. You watch all those, a lot of the other girls out there, I don't wanna say all of them, but like they snatch and they miss and they're right back on the bar because you had this perspective of 20 seconds, which I totally get, that would've been me. Like, oh my gosh, I have to get back on the bar to get this snatch because you had to finish it. Haley steps back, she takes a breather, Knowing she had more time, she still had plenty of time, steps up and stands up that snatch. And man, I was so hyped and she was so hyped. And it was just like the coolest moment to see all that hard work come to fruition because she's put in the work of the snatch. It hasn't been, that wasn't luck. Yeah, we've been lifting seriously every day for the last few months, following Mayhem Bergen strings. So. I know the work I've put in and I don't really, it's, it's not important to listen to what anyone else has to say, especially when they have no idea what you've been doing. So to see all that hard work just pay off in that moment for her and for it to be like, just bright and shiny was really cool. Just being able to hit it under that circumstance and just being in the, you know, the arena, it was so cool and definitely a highlight of my career. And that was the one event, like, that was the one event she was kind of nervous about, for it to be first to have all that adrenaline, all the nerves, still totally crush it, 
Um, that was a good way to start. After that, I was like, okay, I've just felt so relieved because all the other workouts, like, it would be hard to do really bad on or something go wrong, you know, because it's just what I'm good at, like CrossFit. And it was just a big relief knowing that that one was out of the way and everything went according to plan and I was ready to work out. Absolutely. You know how the, everyone always has like that one? Yes, that was it. Dude, you hit it on the second pull. It's because it was in your head before. I knew, well, so if it would have been really heavy, I wouldn't have tried again. Yeah. But something in me was like, go again, yes. go again. Because my, it wasn't like it just fell. Like, yeah. I, it was like You were this. right there. Yeah. yeah. For Adams, her ninth place finish was a massive victory not to mention a lifetime best, and her growing confidence was palpable. After silencing doubters with the barbell, she would now switch gears, facing an event that had her name written all over it. Yeah, I was pumped for that workout because it kind of was just like, it was a chipper in a way, and I love chippers, but also I had never pushed like the tank before, so I was a little bit nervous about that, and you know how I was gonna feel. It was actually not bad at all. Tia and Haley were like close and close. Like she was putting on a little bit of a push the pace with Tia. So I remember it was cool to see Tia looking at Haley. Like I noticed that in the ski. Haley's incredible at ski and chest to bar. And she executed it to perfection. And I mean, just the first real race with Tia was definitely a highlight. I feel like the workout ended up being more just about like the ski erg and chest to bar, but yeah, I had a game plan going into it. I was just gonna run my own race, and I was pretty shocked, I guess, at how it ended up because there wasn't really anyone behind me for, I guess, like a minute, but I wasn't too far behind Tia, so that was kind of cool for me to see. Haley just checking out the field. She knows where she's at. It was cool. Haley finished the event in second, one minute faster than her next closest competitor and appeared to catch the attention of defending champion Tia Claire Toomey. When the dust had settled, Adams ended the day with a fourth position overall and a boatload of confidence. I'm super happy with where I'm at. Right now I'm in fourth with um, all of my favorite events. So fourth after a max lift for me. Super happy with where I'm staying and I think we're only gonna go from here. As the sun rose on the second day at Rocky Top, the team's confidence was at an all time high. In their minds, it was Mayhem Freedom's competition to lose. Just be real with me, are you gonna win every event for the rest of the weekend? Yeah. There's like one that could maybe go either way, but we'll say top two. So we knew going into that one that Rich and Andrew would be better after the thrusters, so Taylor and I decided to partner up. That way we could get the work done and then just end with thrusters, push a little harder on that, and then we'd be done. I, it played out exactly how I thought it would. I knew we might be a little slower. You know, Chase and Andrea, or Chase and Taylor were a little worried about, they thought they'd fall behind on the first part because Taylor isn't comfortable doing handstand push-ups, even though she's good at handstand push-ups, she doesn't think she is. I think we pretty much knew that the gymnastics portions of the workouts were pretty much gonna be the girls and then the guys being like the accessories, so they just make it synchro and the girls kind of run their race. Just because I think the guys are better at gymnastics than both of us are, and that's just kind of the way it worked out. A little nervous to do a bunch of gymnastics with Ritz. Didn't want to be buried to the ground, didn't want to let him down, you know. But as soon as people got to the barbell, that was the separator. That 205 barbell really slowed a lot of teams down that were better at gymnastics. And then once they got to the worm, it was a completely different story. So once we got to the worm, I think it was the same time as on track. And when I looked over and they were dropping the worm, I think after sets of 10, I was like, all right, we're all right. It hurt really, I was really messed up after that workout, honestly. Thrusters are very hard for me. I'd rather do 100 worm squats than 50 worm thrusters, like any day. I would rather do thrusters. I don't think that, I like anything with the worm, except deadlifts. But yeah, I like, I like thrusters and squats, they're fine. The workout was hard. It was good though, I liked it. It was a different, you know, there was some strategy to it, but not over, you couldn't overcomplicate it, if that makes sense. It was fun, I guess. It's really hard. Yeah? Yeah. Is that one of the harder ones this weekend? Uh, well, to be determined. It's the hardest one I've done so far in my mind. Probably everyone's mind. Yeah. Yeah. What's the hardest part about it? Thrusters. Swarm yeah. thrusters, for sure. Probably because that was the end of my workout, too, but those are just a really hard movement in general. Freedom was now approaching equilibrium on the leaderboard after the third event, just one point out from first as they rounded the halfway point in the competition. Adams, who started her day in a qualifying position, now faced a sprint. Her strategy could not have been more simple. 
Go. Just go. It's fast. Less than five minutes. Obviously, touch and go in the sense. Or, thing. Um, minimize no reps, for sure. How does Hillary feel about this one? Really good. Yeah, she's gonna crush it. Day two started with Gretel. We knew that the workout was gonna be fast. I mean, it was just gonna be a burner. You kinda had to send it and just hold on for everyone. I knew that one would be an okay workout for me, just cause it is so short and like, people can hang on for like that three minute range, which is something I need to get better on is that super fast time domain. That's not Haley's strength necessarily. She's still really good at like light clean and jerks and burpees. But it actually ended up going pretty well. I think I got six in it, so not great, not awful. <laughs> yeah, but it hurts so bad. Like the last round, I thought I did three clean jerks, did two, dropped it, and, she's, and he was like two, and I was like, oh God. I was just so blacked out. So I tried, I definitely gave him all. Yeah, she finished just as she needed to. And what was cool too, it wasn't like, of course, do you want to come in first or second? She came in, I think, sixth. But she was like, that was perfect. That was exactly what I needed to do. That was the best I got. And it was. Yeah, I mean, I, I knew that that was my all. I didn't hold back or anything. So I wasn't like upset with how I did. It was just more of seeing something to work on. Despite a sixth place finish, Adams was still ascending in the overall standings. More importantly, she was flexing maturity and confidence. I had a total blackout. Like, I think I dropped it at two. You did. I was like, on that last set. I was yeah. like, what the hell are you doing? Totally but you were still ahead. Out. Like, it didn't matter. She, yeah, no, no big deal. I, I thought he said three. Yeah. You did great. You did really You crushed really it. Good. Honestly, you were yeah. creeping there, and I was like, all right, yeah. you're about to catch him. That's what I'm saying. Like, that there. three minute range still isn't. It's still, yeah. yeah. I knew that one would be. Like, it's still not a bad workout, but. Oh, no, you crushed that shit. That would probably be my second worst. Yeah, but it's six. Next, the teams would face a sprint of their own. With a four-time champion in individuals and teams, the 10th fittest woman on the planet in 2020, a four-time games team veteran and an ambitious newcomer, expectations were high, and there was only one option. Send it. Is there any strategy on this one or just go? I kind of just go. I practiced it with 32 inch box jumps because, uh, burpee box jumps because in the basement, I'll have a 20 and a 12. And it was really hard. 32 was surprisingly way harder. So hopefully this should feel easier. Yeah, it's an individual race. Going into that event was a little nervous, but then Taylor pulled ahead, and then Rich went, we pulled farther ahead, and then I got a little angry that I didn't have anyone to chase. That one was really fun. It was short, it was fast, it was power output, but you had to be a little bit fit also. I thought it was really fun, it was well written. Individual, so there's no one out there with you, but it was a good time. Yeah, I had one goal, and that was to go unbroken on the dumbbell. I tested that one a few times, and I've been practicing trying to touch and go to the 100. Yeah, we needed, we needed some points on the board at that point. We needed to kind of pull ahead a little bit. And I think that we all knew that was an event that we should do well at as well. So we were hoping to, to grab some points there, which we did. Yeah, no, I think it's internally, everybody kind of knew, hey, let's, let's go out and win some events and do, you know, do what we can. You don't know, like I said, you still, you know, uh, Lone Star was right there, West Chase was right there, On Track was right there. Yeah, after day two, we weren't pulling super ahead. I mean, we came in, I don't know how many points ahead. It wasn't, it, we were by no means running away with it. Mayhem Freedom would end day two in the driver's seat for the first time. Now it comes to light that the competition isn't always across the lanes, but sometimes within them. Nistler and Williamson have a sibling rivalry, it seems, that supersedes the Mac. Shut up. Let's go back and watch the footage. Nick has the split times. Maybe, maybe not. What do you say, six seconds? So much room for error in those six seconds. Let's race on the relay one tomorrow again too. Fine. Muscle up, snatch, row. Fine. Right? Beat. I'll redo this later and just beat yourself. No longer happy with simply qualifying, Adam's focus appears to have shifted. With a wheelhouse event in her sights, it's time now to show what she's truly capable of. Hey. 
Stay in control. That's the only thing you need to worry about. Stay in control. Stay in control. Just do your own thing. Because I don't want to get on 450 first, 450. I mean, obviously I'll be on breath, but I don't want to be like, oh no. Yeah. 100%. Because I can like keep a decent pace in the whole run. Yes. Like all of them if I don't go out You don't need to win the first run. Yeah. It's not about that. It's a long workout. She's so wise. She doesn't even like really need us at all. She just needs to like say it to us so we can confirm it. That's kind of what I've learned. So going into Inception, I thought Haley could beat Tia. Like I really was confident in her ability to run ring muscle up and wall wall. More real love, I need bigger stages. I'm an addict of energy. More haters, I'm a savage to enemies. More paper, ravenous nature, lavish identity. No favors, number eight Laker. Told my wife I might need ten of me. I get the championship, cause I hit the gym when you be on chicken and Hennessy. Yeah, so I knew that was going to be probably one of my best workouts of the weekend. It was definitely fun getting to race Tia the first few rounds. I think it was a really cool thing for the crowd to kind of shift and see that there was someone that could push Tia, and they got behind that, and we're excited about that. I knew that we were, I was already around ahead of whoever was behind me, and I wasn't going to be able to catch her, so I just... Um, just knowing that we started another day of comp and I just kind of chilled a little bit after that so I didn't have to like kill myself. I was still trying hard but like I'm sure she did the same thing too. Yeah so just slowed down a little bit but it was really cool to be one of the only two women that finished that workout. She would come up, catch up on the run, pass her on the run, go back. Tia's great at muscle ups so she would pass her a little bit on the muscle ups and then they were about even on the wall ball. So it was I felt like it was a shift in that workout in some ways of just people seeing that, okay, the torque event wasn't a fluke. Like she's back again, just pushing Tia and the rest of the field kind of was nowhere in sight, nowhere near her. I didn't think of like not finishing at all. I guess I didn't really add much about the time in my head or how long it would take. So I just went in with the mindset of finishing and I mean, I didn't know it wasn't an option. They're the only two people to finish that workout for sure. But just the next generation, like Haley is, she is so fit and she's so smart and she's so just dialed in. And it's hard to even explain to like put it out there because she's so young. She's so young. There's still so much more. So to see her and Tia just at the end and Tia who's won so many times and who's an incredible athlete to be pushing the pace with her, it was really exciting. I think I just am so used to being so humbled here at the barn that I don't really like hype myself up or think that I'm superior compared to anyone else. So I, I don't know, I didn't really think anything about it. Just was happy with how it did. Just seeing her confidence grow, like even over the weekend, she was more confident going into this competition than I've experienced with her. And then for it to grow, like throughout the weekend, and be like, yeah, I, I belong here. Like, it's no doubt anymore. Cause there's always those doubts, those pre-competition doubts. You're like, have I done enough? Did I do enough of the right things? Like, we, you're not sure. And to show up, and she said that to me on multiple occasions. She's like, what we're doing is working. Like, it's working and I just need to keep doing it and stay dialed in and that's easy for Haley to work. She's a workhorse. So to have that affirmation of what they're doing is working. So her and Rich and the training and all that is working. I think that's huge. Haley Adams ends day two in second place overall. The real victory of the day, however, is symbolic. As one of only two women to complete Inception, Adams found herself on an island with greatness. The other woman joining her on the finish mat was four-time CrossFit Games champion, Tia Claire Toomey. Another day of competition complete, Adams maintained a calm and confident demeanor. How, uh, how are you feeling after day two? Good, yeah. Um, excited for tomorrow. Rest and cover tonight. It's pretty early, it's only 3 o'clock. So. You like tomorrow's events? Yeah. What is your goal for tomorrow? Execute the way I know I can and hopefully games. On the final day of competition, CrossFit Mayhem had all but cemented the top spot in the overall standings. Regardless, they lacked confidence as they approached a linchpin event that would take them all to their limits. We literally have zero plan. You guys never have a plan. <laughs> we have no plan at all. <laughs> That's the best plan. Yeah. And it can't go wrong. The Sunday, 
the first workout was the one that really, I was kind of like, all right, here we go. You know, like, what's this going to look like? Yeah, I actually, I came into event, or day three, very uncertain, knowing that Taylor and I had to lug our butts on this runner. We are not runners. <laughs> that actually went way better than I thought. I was happy. I think we both might have PR'd our two four miles. I honestly didn't didn't know if we would win that workout. If I was to look at one of them minus the strength workout, that was the workout that I was kind of like, you know, the girls aren't super comfortable. They don't like running. I hate running. So we were kind of planning on holding about an eight minute mile or so. We we're both very nervous, Andrew and I, for the run because we're just not good runners. So this is a little sad, but Taylor and I will just race each other on the field. So she's actually mad at me right now because I beat her off the true form because I wasn't honest with her to where I was. And then I think we try to outdo each other on even toes to bar. We'll start with a pace and we'll get faster and faster. Like we both just don't want to be the one slowing the other one down. And we want to prove that maybe we you know, you're better at something. So we start running and we're kind of talking back and forth like, okay, I'm at point two. Okay, I'm also at point two. Because neither one of us wants to be the last one off because we don't like to feel like we're holding the other one back. So I get to the halfway point. I'm like, halfway? And she's like, okay, cool. I'm at uh, four nine. So I'm like, all right, I'm just a sliver ahead. Great, we're doing good. And then she gets to point eight. She's like, I'm a point eight. I was right there with her and I'm feeling good. I'm not really that tired. I'm like, okay. She's like, I'm going to slow down a little bit. I'm like, all right, perfect. So I kind of slowed down a little bit. I was like, I'm feeling okay. So I kind of speed up a little bit. And then all of a sudden I'm at 0.95 and she gets off. And I'm like, what are you, I thought you were gonna slow down. She's like, later she told me she just stopped looking at the monitor altogether, assumed she slowed down, which she didn't. So she sprinted the last part and left me there alone. But it all worked out. We went really fast through the wall balls because we were both feeling pretty good after that. We literally race each other through all the synchro stuff always. Uh, still make it synchro, but we just don't want to be the one slowing the other one down. Yeah, they try to kill each other. And then they try to kill us in the process. And I'm like, hey, I'm not getting into this. It's a different dynamic. Like I said, I feel like in years past, our girls have gotten along really well. And like, hey, you know, how can I help each other or whatever? And these girls, are they get along really well. They're like sisters, but they also try to kill each other. They're like, I just want to smash her into the ground, or I just want my time to be faster than hers, or blah, blah, blah. Or, or you know, we'll start something like, we're not racing, right? And you're like, I, I mean, we, the other teams, not each other. So it's fun, though. It's good. You know, it's cool. I mean, that's the, the type of mentality you want. We had a pace to, that we were going to try to hold on the runner, almost seven, about around a seven minute pace on the run. And I actually thought we would get a little bit of a break before we would have to go into wall balls, but our girls completely smashed it. So we got off the runner and went right to the wall balls. We didn't have a strategy on rep scheme or nothing. We we're just like, hey, we're going to pick it up. We need to drop. We'll just communicate as we're going. Same thing on toes to bar. A couple times we'd get some no reps on things and I'd be like, hey, like on the wall balls, I'd be like, hey, stop. We're going to stop here. We're going to collect, figure out what's going on. Let's try to fix it. Instead of just keep trying to hammer away reps, if you keep getting no reps, what's the point in you know wasting it? And then it came time to push the sled. I know when the first female finished the sled, they ran to the finish mat. So when I finished the sled, I took off running to the finish mat. They stopped me, told me to go back. I thought maybe I didn't push the sled far enough. So I pushed the sled to the next line, turn around, I run back to the finish mat. They told me to go back out there. So I'm like completely confused at this point. So then I just stand there and then Rich did his. He didn't know there was a time cap. Technically, I think we finished that one, but according to their clock, we didn't. The sled was so easy. Stupid. They weren't clear on what to do. <laughs> did you know I was supposed to wait back there with you? No. So I'm just looking like an idiot and running back and forth. <laughs> you didn't I should have pushed the sled line. You didn't push across the line. I it was hard. Who cares? How was that event otherwise? It was, it was hard. Um, the areas that were hard, I knew were going to be hard. Uh, the run sucked. Uh, wall balls got wall difficult. Balls sucked. And we, we had like no three or four no reps, and I was like, okay, we're off. Like, let's I'm stop for a second. Just, yeah, I'm glad we Once we start missing reps, I was like, okay, let's chill out for a second. What so, was the worst part? Tozakar got hard, actually. I was surprised. Yeah. I was like 20 at first, and I was like, ah, 15. Once we got to 55 wall balls, it started to suck. Yeah. With another first place finish, Freedom's dominance was abundantly clear, and another chapter in their dynasty was nearly written. Meanwhile, in the individual competition, it was impossible for anyone in the CrossFit world to ignore Haley Adams' rising star as she was preparing to start her final day. It was truly amazing to hear how many people just like cheered for me and yelled for me and like even had my shirts on. I would see so many of my shirts in the crowd. It was such a humbling feeling too, but I'm just, 
I just couldn't believe that that many people were cheering for me. It was cool. We've talked a lot about how Haley is a great competitor, and she is. She's absolutely incredible. But I always want to talk about how amazing she is as a person and as a woman, and how she is 20, and she's caring and kind and funny, and she cares about inspiring young women and helping them on this journey to be confident in their skin and what they're doing. And so I, I love that about Haley because she is so much more than a CrossFit competitor and she cares so much about the community and the people that she's around that I always want to make sure that people know that. And they, I think they do, but she's just amazing all around. Yeah, like Tasia brought it up to me a few times she was like people really like you because you're relatable in a way you know like you're not a robot and you're not just you know you're Haley you're different and people like that and parents would come up to me and say like you're such an inspiration to my daughter or young kids would come up to me ask me to take pictures and it's just it's cool to know that you're leaving that kind of impact like at the end of the day I want to be a good person too and I want to leave you know I want to be an inspiration. I am just just grateful to be her friend, like truthfully, to be her big sister, and so proud of her. She works so hard, and she sacrifices so much. And on top of all that, she's a kind, loving young woman. That's, you don't find that everywhere, especially in the professional athletic world. I, I really don't think you do. And I think that's why so many people love her. They can sense that, like, I'm like, there's something different about you, Haley. Like, people love to see just the grit you've got and the silliness, like the dancing and all those things. Like, you are you, like authentically yourself out in the field and you're not trying to pretend to be someone you're not. Seeing the beauty and wonder of her, it was just so amazing to watch as a friend and sister. Adams now dipped her toes into the warm-up area to start her final day, as Mayhem Freedom was planning a cannonball to finish their time at Rocky Top. So we're up to over 500 now? Yeah. Are you really going to do it? Yes. <laughs> I'm going to go try some muscle over there. Oh, right. Right for the row. Like, you have to pull it down for the row. Yeah. I didn't know if you would get my text in time, but you did. Good. Totally She's gonna wear those on the comp floor. What's that? She's, it's for money. I'm not. She's doing wearing it goggles. She's it would have been better for Hell Diver because at least it was a reference. You know what I mean? I didn't know the names of any of these, so wouldn't have picked up on them. It all started out as a joke. She was like pulling stuff out of her bag and goggles fell out and she was like, huh, would, uh, would everybody get me to wear these goggles on the floor? And everybody's like, I was like, I don't, you know, somebody said a hundred bucks and then kept going, kept climbing, kept climbing. And it was like six or seven hundred bucks. And then she was like, well, I don't want to look like a jerk out there. So she's like, we're doing this Rescue Freedom event, so I'll donate all that money uh, to charity. So then it kind of like snowballed from there. But you know, it was, it was, uh, it was pretty funny. Cause you're like, you don't want to be a jerk and like we're up, we're winning. And then you come out in goggles. So she was like, well, if I do it to charity, then it's not as bad. I knew that one would be a good one. Cause we all tested that one. All of us went unbroken. We all knew each other's times. So I knew if we finished quick, we would get a longer rest leading into the part B. Yeah. I mean, that event started off very straightforward. Everyone has a job to do. You do it. We all got through that part, that was great. The last deadlift burpee thing was so confusing. There were just bodies everywhere. We were getting no reps, but we couldn't hear the judge saying that. We didn't know what number we were on. We are just lucky we got through it. There were some no reps. Well, we were planning to drop. We did the first 10, I think, on broken, and then from there on out, it was like 10s or 5s, or we'd start with a set of 10, then do a set of 5 on the deadlift. But as far as the no reps, from what I could understand, what they were saying is we had to make sure we were standing up all the way. So I was like hyper extending, pulling my shoulders far back, but it was causing my knees to go forward. So maybe my knees weren't locking out. My dad is all short and he really wants to take it for selfie with you. Oh, hi. Daddy, it's more connection. Hello. I don't know how to take it. Yeah. Yeah. Say cheese! Daddy, say cheese! 
Yes, we did. Oh, you did? Okay, good. Did you get one Yeah. They wanted you guys more. That guy was overseas. Freedom ends the competition in dominant fashion. It's silence for the doubters and proof that their experiment to combine former rivals appears to be working very well. All eyes now shift to Adams, who starts her day with an event that would produce the closest, most exciting race of the weekend for the female field. How are we feeling today? Great, like even better than yesterday, and yesterday was pretty good. How does her like this event? She likes it. Very good movements for her. We do a lot of toes to bar, a lot of biker, a lot of thrusters, and a lot of lunging, so. It's convenient. It's convenient. It works out when we get to this point. On the final day going into those workouts, I was in second and I wanted to stay in second. Just And I felt confident in my ability to do that too. So, and I, believe it or not, I think I had the most fun Sunday. Like, I wasn't as nervous just because, like, like you said, um, it, something would have really have to go wrong to not make it. So I think the the nerves part were out of it. So in the try where's it come, Haley put on a show, that's for sure. Yeah, that was one of the craziest finishes I've ever had. I li she liked this workout going in, I liked this workout for her going in. Biker, toe to bar, thruster and lunge. Another workout that was just gonna burn and hurt. So Tio, she kind of got out in front early, but it, there was a race between Brooke and Haley. Final round, finished my thruster. I, I did get a few no reps too on my thrusters. We're still not really sure why. I finished my last thruster, start my lunge. Um, my back foot slipped in some liquid and then ended up saving it somehow, not falling in front of everyone and walked like a few steps forward. So obviously that's no rep. She sent it. I'm like trying to think of what's the right word. She just sent it at the end. Brooke finishes her thrusters. So we both start lunging at the same time. <laughs> Of course, this would happen. So it was an epic finish because we literally stepped across the line at the same time. She still fought for it and then landed on top of the barbell with an exciting epic finish. I'm glad she's okay. Me, I'm like, is she okay? I'm so worried. But yeah, it was a, a show, that's for sure. I think I, I technically got it, but because I like landed on my bar and didn't technically go over the bar, I got a one second penalty. So I got third and she got second, but it was it was just so crazy, everything that happened at that event. And it was totally out of my control. Yeah, it's so fun. That's like, you don't always get that in every workout. There's, you know, a lot of just separation because people have strengths and weaknesses. So to see Brooke and her go on that lunge and race for it, it gets you like up out of your seat, like I was standing up. I'm like, oh my gosh, she's got it. And they were neck and neck. And they literally finished at nearly exact the same time. So. It's exciting, and I think the crowd loves that too. It was so loud in there. I was lunging. I was like, oh my goodness, it's so loud. Yeah, it's cool when it's you and you get to feel it. It's definitely uh, doesn't come often. Before the final event, she was four points out of second, so four points behind Brooke. Yeah, no doubt she was going to qualify, but obviously she wanted to come in second. She wanted to move up on the leaderboard. I was super excited for the last event too, um, so I had confidence going into that. That workout, the last workout was good for her. We knew that it was going to be good for her. So, yeah, there wasn't much, I guess, to worry about. The chip timer favors Brooke Wells at the finish line, and the result visibly adds fuel to Haley's fire. I literally cannonballed on the bar. I saw that. <laughs> yeah. But when I freaking fell in my pee. It's okay. I would say that's successful. Yeah. She totally crushed it. Incredible. She's gotten really good on the bike too, I noticed. She would like catch people on the bike. Yeah. Which I knew she was good on the bike, but that was awesome. From the outside looking in, it's clear that Haley Adams is no longer a child participating with her idols. She's playing to win, and she knows she can. Yeah, so I'm like, did I do yeah. four pull, kip, hit? I think I did that at the games. Yeah. That's what I did at the games. Try that and see how that works. Because that's the same height as the one that's the same. That bike went? Yeah. I remember I went one, two, three, four, kip, hit. Yeah. Because I remember Cause I was it was like, an uneven number. Yes. Okay. I think I'm going to do that. Yeah. It worked perfect then. It was and that too. was yeah. faster like on the road. Yeah. So. One of the big moments in my head from the weekend was Haley before that final event just Seeing the confidence that she had going into it, knowing that if she executed the workout as she's capable of, 
that she would get that second place spot and that confidence is growing and that's been really cool to watch. Brooke is obviously a seasoned veteran and really wanting to beat T or really wanted to beat Haley. And there was a four point separation. So not only did actually Haley had to beat Brooke, there needed to be a person in between them to guarantee that she came in second. Otherwise I think it was gonna be a tie and then the tie break. Yeah, I was excited for that last event too because I think a lot of people thought that that 70 pound dumbbell was gonna be like hard for me. I feel like even the announcers like on the live stream people were saying that they were like, oh, this might be a little heavy for her or whatever. Well, I'm like, okay. But I'm pretty sure I was one of the only few, me and Tia were the only ones to like touch and go all of them. But yeah, I was super happy with how that event went. I took second pretty comfortably. She's not afraid. She's not afraid to go out there and just push someone who's incredibly fit in the sport and try to beat them. That's what's cool about Haley is she, she doesn't have that fear. She's not worried about anything exterior outside of just doing the best she can and following her own game plan to, to win. When the gauntlet was laid down, Adam stepped up, finishing the weekend in second place overall. I think this set me up great going into the games. This was a good practice run going against the best in the world. Um, I consider this a pretty hard call, and I think it was great practice for what's to come. Do you get like, act like right, when do you like, <laughs> remember stage one when you danced and blah, like when do you do that? Like when does your emotion like cover you? I don't do that right now because there's still a lot of work left to do. This is just a small part. <laughs> to show that we're like on the right path. Yeah, yeah. It's it's very small. Small. Aside from your performance, how cool is it to compete in front of all these people? Again? Oh my god, it was the coolest thing. <laughs> like just hearing people yell. Yeah, I haven't been in person like since the games last year, so like yeah, yeah, yeah. just hearing all the people yell for me, like I didn't realize that how many people liked me. Although Mayhem Freedom is content to celebrate their victory, they are still hungry. A curse to those reaching for greatness is that good is never enough. When you compete alongside Rich Froning, the expectations are high, and the shoes of past Freedom rosters are hard to fill. Each team member carries with them a small burden from the competition, a challenge to seek perfection in Madison. If I'm being 100% transparent and honest, I want to win every event. Is what it is. Yeah. There's definitely a lot more pressure uh, to win just because we were, they were winning before with super teams. And I feel like I had personally uh, extra pressure because Rich, Taylor, and Andrea have been to the games. I have not been to the games, I've qualified, but haven't competed. So I feel like if we win, we should. And I feel like if we do bad, then it could be a reflection of me, maybe. So there's just more pressure to to do good, push harder. I don't think I'm putting any pressure on the team. I think each and every one of us are putting the same pressure on the team. I'm excited to move forward. I'm excited to keep training. Uh, I'm excited to kind of uh, hone in on some weaknesses that we have and, and put on a good show at the games. I think we uh, can get a lot better, honestly. There's a lot of points there on the ground. I guess it's just, CrossFit's just become a way of life for me. I just feel like it's another year, let's go. So yeah, this will be year seven at the games we're figuring out. I guess at this point, I just love it so much. I don't, I feel happy, but also like I feel more like this was just a stepping stone to the games. So this is kind of the first year where we've been more focused on the far future than we have what's right in front of us. I'm just really excited to have this opportunity. Go back to the games again, so that's been my life for some time now. And just to have this opportunity while I'm in school is just so unique, it's awesome. Not many people get this chance. It feels amazing to have, like, you know, I said, like we had the MAC date, now we have the games date. We know what's going to happen. We know, you know, it's familiar territory where last year you're kind of in this weird, like, limbo. It's like, oh, we're training for, no, we're not. Nope, we are. Nope, we're not. That's the only thing I'm focused on right now is games. I'm not thinking anything past the games. I just want to win. I want to go and win. We don't train as much as we do to not, to show up and not win. It feels good to win. Um, I like being on top of the podium. It always it hasn't always happened when we were against Mayhem, but I guess now that we joined forces, I'd like to get used to it. You got a tank and a sword. I know. What the hell is this? We got this too. Huh? This is like Christmas. Though. It's like Christmas. They got a tank and a sword. Load <laughs> it up.
The 2021 Mayhem Freedom Team is getting used to standing on top, as well they should. Their future in Madison is very bright. Haley Adams is also learning to wear a new persona. Underdog no more, Haley Adams is a contender for the throne. Yeah, I'm super excited to have this one over with first and be heading back to the Madison, Wisconsin for the games and just to show everyone that I'm gonna be ready when the time comes and that we're on the right path and going for the podium this year. Well, I was expecting exactly what she did, to be in second and but pushing Tia for sure. I It's been crazy for me to watch from the outside and she doesn't even know how fit she's gotten, how much she's improved. She, I don't think she's fully grasped that yet. She's definitely gaining confidence in that, but I see it just like every day. So how she even pushes Rich, it's, it's pretty wild. If Tia wasn't there, Haley would have smashed everybody and everything else. And so it was, like I said, it was just that confidence. You could see it and it kept growing and kept growing and snowballing. I mean, you saw that in the final event too. Burned right through it. Very few people see the work that we put in every day and like just weighing every single single piece of food that goes in my mouth and just making sure I get enough sleep. Like very, very few people see that and it really just comes down to discipline. So getting to show that off and show the hard work that we've all been putting in is just, it's so rewarding. From my perspective as a competitor, but also somebody that's with her, you know, every day training with her and, and doing those things, it was cool to have her have that realization, like the confidence piece of it, you know. Because I, I look at Haley as almost like a little sister of, you know, or, you know, like with my girls, to see that confidence, you know, that's what you want to see in, in somebody that, you know, you respect that well and, and have around all that time. So, honestly, that was the coolest part for me is to her to have that, you know, second place is incredible, she did great, but the, the confidence that she gained and that just a little bit of like, hey, I can do this. I'm like, that's cool. That's pretty cool. It's like, it's really hard for me to even kind of wrap my mind around because I remember when Haley showed up here and she was fit. She was really fit then. And she's just grown so much and fought through so much. And yeah, there's more, there's more to her than CrossFit. And she's amazing at CrossFit. She's going to keep smashing it. And yeah, I'm just excited for her future just in all aspects. What an incredible young woman.